Hello and welcome back to the Squash Bagel. The last time we spoke about squash rackets and today we're actually changing the topic. We are going to speak about squash strings. I think the first thing to say, I do not even string rackets myself. I have a little bit of understanding with regards to the materials that they are made of, but with respect to what will be better in terms of monofilament, multifilaments, and everything else in terms of the squash string terminology. I am not the guy for that. I would advise probably looking at stuff from the string doctor or probably asking any questions to the string doctor. But in this video, all I'm gonna be doing is speaking from my perspective as a player. I am going to cover the seven strings that I tried from February last year, 2022, until February, 2023. And I'll also just like to make a note of the fact that my personal preference or my personal opinion of the string itself will be influenced by multiple factors such as my playing style, the racket that I am using, the tension at which the rackets were strung at, as well as the stringing apparatus, as well as methods that will be used by the stringer. So most of the strings that I mentioned today will be found at squashatears.co.za, but I'll speak more to that a bit later on in the video. So without further ado, let's go. So string number one that we're going to speak about is the Technifiber 305 1.1 millimeter string. My personal rating for the string out of 10 is an eight and a half out of 10. This is the string that I'm currently using at the moment on my Dunlop Revolution 125. Things that I liked, I feel that the string gives quite a good feel, a great feel and response. In terms of playability, it's quite high up there. In comparison to some of the other strings, I felt that there's also a good power to control ratio. You sort of get a bit of both worlds with the string, which can be important for players which would like to either change or would have to change maybe the way that they are playing the game at that period in time. So that can be based on just switching it up for strategy or different playing conditions, court conditions, atmospheric conditions. So I thought that it was quite a, I guess, good string to have a bit of both. You need to switch up your game a little bit during the game. Obviously that can also be affected by your racket itself, but the string will not limit you in doing that. I do find that playing it with a bit more of an open face gives you that sort of cut and bite that you want to get on the ball. But if you also just want sort of a blunt instrument where you want a little bit of power, playing with a little bit of a flatter face definitely helps you punch and push that ball around the court with minimal effort. I think everyone knows the 305 string can be seen from a distance. So one of the great things about it, I guess it does not really make a racket maybe seem a bit odd with respect to color. That green that has been sort of made very popular by Technifiber with their 305 string is quite an iconic color. So it sort of matches almost any racket that you put it on. Last but not least with respect to likes, I really do feel that it maintains tension well. If that is something that you would be concerned about, if you'd like to obviously keep your tension at a particular tension for a long period of time, you'd be looking for a string that maintains its tension quite well. So things that I do dislike about the string itself is the fact that, well, this is coming from at least the opinions of others. Personally, myself, I'm yet to snap the string, but the durability of the string has been called into question. It being a 1.1 millimeter string means that it's quite thin compared to some of the other counterparts that we're gonna speak about today. But that being said, it has been mentioned that the string does break quite easily. And obviously the second dislike, which will partner on with this, is that it is quite an expensive string, which you sort of expect for a premium string. This is one of the most popular strings on the PSA itself. So it is obviously something that is very sought after, but one of the downsides of that is the fact that it is quite expensive compared to some of the other Technifiber alternatives as well as also the other string manufacturers out there. So with respect to tensions and rackets that I have at least experimented with the 305 1.1 millimeter, I have, as I mentioned, I'm playing the Dunlop at the moment, playing the Dunlop Revelation 125. So I have currently got the 305 1.1 millimeter on my racket strung at 28 pounds. I have also tried it on the Carboflex X-Top, the 130 gram version. So before I moved to the Dunlop Revelation, I was always using the Carboflex X-Top 130 and also strung that at 28 pounds. I think on both of those rackets, it's quite a good combination. Maybe I would have gone a little bit looser on the Carboflex itself, but I do find that 28 pounds for me, at least that's where I do enjoy stringing my rackets at. I've also tried it on the Dunlop Evolution 130 gram racket, which is sort of the, used to be called the Declan James racket, but I have got that at the moment at 27 pounds. And I also have the 25 pounds on the Technifiber Supreme 125, which I believe is probably the worst combination. I think that racket itself with a string, which also gives you a little bit more cut and bite on the ball for a little bit more control probably isn't needed. I would probably go for a, another type of string, which doesn't give you maybe as much feel maybe a bit more durable on the Supreme 125. String number two is the Technifiber 305 1.2 millimeter string. This is probably your more common 305 string that would be seen amongst players on all courts around the world. My personal rating for the string is a seven out of 10. Things that I do like about the string, similar to the 1.1 millimeter,
millimeter, you also get the same great feel and response. I found the stream was also great for control. Obviously the 1.1 millimeter might give you a little bit more bite, but this one is also right up there with respect to the control that you do get out of the string. I do also believe that the 1.1 is probably a specialist string for certain players, but 1.2 millimeter version, which I said is probably your more common and more popular 305 string is probably suited towards a multiple array of players can be used obviously from people from the lower end of the skills ladder to individuals which are playing on the higher end as well. I think that's one thing that people do like about the 1.2 millimeters, the fact that it fibers out quite nicely before it's about to snap. So that's always a good indicator that your string's about to snap and also you get that sort of soft feel just before they're about to snap, which is almost like you knocked a cricket bat in. It sort of gives you a very sweet response or a great feel just before the string snap and they start to fiber. I also believe that the string also maintains the tension well. I have used it before. Before I actually started using the 1.1 millimeter, I would string with the 1.2 millimeter. So I also do know that the tension is maintained quite well, at least from my experience. So one of the things that I dislike about the string itself is that I feel it could come at a better price point due to the fact that it is a very popular string and it's probably your more common string which would be seen or bought from the Technifiber range itself. Other than that, the only reason I would say it's, it's about at a seven out of 10 is that there's not too much that goes wrong with the string itself, but it just doesn't give you all the benefits of the other type of strings, which I'm gonna mention. With regards to the tensions and the rackets that I've tried the 1.2 millimeter Technifiber 305 string at, it would be the Carboflex Heritage 125 gram racket, the popular yellow one, which I have mentioned mentioned obviously in the previous video. And also on the Supreme 125, that would be at factory default, which will be around about 24, 25 pounds. And I actually think that's probably your better string as well as tension for the Technifiber Supreme. So around about 24, 25 with 1.2 millimeter Technifiber 305 string is actually quite a good combination for the Supreme, at least in my opinion and experience. String number three is the Technifiber Dynamics. This one, I am coupling the 1.15 millimeter as well as the 1.25 millimeter together. So just a little bit of disclaimer about this one. I have only tested this on rackets, which have sort of come off the shelf. So it would be at factory setting or factory default tension. And I have never actually restrung a racket with any of these strings or with the um, Dynamics of these. I think I've given it around a six out of 10 for the following reasons. Some of the things that I do like about it, I feel that it does offer an alternative to the Technifiber 305 range. So if you dislike the Technifiber 305 range, I find the Dynamics VP string gives you a little bit of an alternative. It's a little bit different. It plays and feels very different to the Technifiber 305s. I feel that it's a string that you either like or you dislike. So you'll find a lot of players that at least I've spoken to on the one extreme end which love the string and then other players on the other end which do not like the string at all. One of the things I also like about the string is the fact that it's black. So I do feel that a black string similar to the iconic 305 Technifiber string makes a racket look good. If you are someone that's sort of a bit fussy with regards to how your racket might look at the end of the day, this could be a string which also fits some of the purposes because it has got some advantages. But if you are a player which likes an aesthetic looking racket and there are people which are like that, they will opt for the Dynamax 305 strings because it is in black. Some of the things that I dislike, and this is probably due to the fact that it was at factory default tension. I do not feel that the string is very responsive, or at least I didn't get a lot of feel out of it. It's a sort of a weird experience, at least, that I found with the Dynamax VP. I do feel that on the 125 gram X top, it could be an excellent combination, but I found that the string was very spongy. You do get a feel, but it's not the right type of feel. It's very spongy, meaning that the ball just sort of explodes off the strings itself. With regards to that, I also feel that it was a little bit hard to control especially if you're going to use a racket like the 130 gram versions or the 135 gram versions of the Carboflex X-Top or any of the Carboflexes itself, or maybe a heavy racket, I feel that you can probably do a lot of not damage, but yeah, damage to yourself trying to string them with the Dynamax VP strings. I just felt that it was very hard to control. It almost felt like I was hitting a bouncy ball. And with respect to the tension, I do not feel that it retains tension over time. So when I had the Carboflex X-Top, I had the Dynamax the P strings in there for about three weeks. And over that time period, I felt that my string tension was obviously becoming a little bit looser over time, which can be a good thing for some people. But for me, obviously I do like my quite highly strung at a 28 pound somewhere around there. So I do feel that it lost tension over time. With respect to tensions and rackets, as I did mention, I have never restrung a racket with the Dynamax VP strings. I've only had the factory default strings on the racket itself. So all of these will be at factory tension, which I have mentioned is around 24, 25 pounds. That's according to various sources that could be completely wrong, but from what I understand, it's around 24, 25 pounds. The records that I've tried it on will be the Carboflex Airshaft 125, the Carboflex X-Top 125, and that was just testing. 
the demo and I probably feel that that was the best racket to partner with the Dynamax VP strings. And I've tried it on the Carboflex X-Top 130, which was what I was using obviously before I moved over to the Dunlop. And I've also tried it on the Car Technifiber Carboflex X-Speed 135 and probably for me, that was the worst combination of Dynamax VP strings as well as a racket. String number four is the Dunlop Iconic AF, I think AF stands for Ali Farag, which is at 1.18 millimeters. My overall rating for the string is actually eight out of 10, considering the fact that I've also never restrung any of my rackets with the string. You'll obviously hear that it's quite difficult to source a string, at least well here in South Africa, but I actually did enjoy it. And that's why I've obviously rated it quite highly. With respect to the likes, I think this one actually grew onto me, as I did mention. And even though, as I've said, I only tested at factory tension, I do feel like you've got a really good feel and response. I think it is a string suited for a player which not particularly wants to hit the ball very hard, but wants to place the ball quite well. So shaving off, obviously, maybe the 0.02 millimeters gives it a little bit more extra cut on the ball, maybe a little bit more of a bite. But I do feel that you got a fair amount of control as well as power, so it did not come at the sacrifice of power. As I said, obviously, I was actually quite surprised that I enjoyed the string, even though it came straight off the shelf and I never actually restrung any racket with it. I do feel that suited me quite well. I would consider actually using it if I could find it. So that's one of the downsides is that in one day is not enough information about the string. Not to say that it's not popular, it's just I have not heard or read anywhere of people really giving it glowing reviews. I do find that it's quite hard to source, at least from where I am in South Africa. And that would mean that if you do find it, it will not be at a competitive price because it is not something that is quite popular. Although this did not happen to me, I have witnessed a couple of friends of mine which have played with the string. They've snapped the string within a week. It could be multiple factors of it obviously coming straight off the shelf. All the player miss hitting the ball, depending where the ball obviously strikes and you snap your strings and hit in the center, you're probably less likely to break your strings more towards the frame. If you hit more towards the frame, you are more likely to break your strings. So that could be influencing factor, but I have noted that down as one of the dislikes that I do have about the string. With respect to tensions and rackets that I've tried the Dunlop Iconic Pro AF, as I mentioned, this will be at factory default tension, but I tried it on the Dunlop Revolution Pro Lite as well as the Dunlop Revelation 125. So this is a message for my South African audience. Are you sick and tired of trying to find your favorite racket only to be let down by either a high price or lack of stock? Well, squashtears.co.za is a solution for you. They have a wide range of squash rackets, squash gear, strings, and whatever it is that you're looking for all on their online website. I think two of the sweeteners that I can mention is the fact that one, they offer these products at very competitive prices and two, you get free shipping orders at 3,000 Rand or more. So click the link that I've left down in the description below to visit their site and find some awesome deals. And when you check out, let them know that the Squash Bagel sent you there. Happy shopping. Okay, so before we carry on talk about the rest of the strings, so currently one of the biggest competitors to the Technifiber string market would be Asherways, and there's a very good reason why. Asherway strings do not only match Technifiber strings with regards to performance, durability, quality, tension, retention, all those type of things that I have obviously mentioned as influencing factors for a string, but they also offer a wider variety and range of strings compared to what you get from Technifiber. In fact, the range is so big that I have only been able to test three out of the 12 strings that they provide in their range. Now, I know not a lot of people have tried Ashway strings or even heard about them, at least within the South African market. One of the reasons why I've used Ashway strings in the past is because looking at an alternative to the Technifiber range. In doing a lot of research, into the types of strings I have stumbled across the Ashway range, which I probably did not pay attention to because obviously they've been available for a very long period of time. One of the nicest things that I do like about the Ashway range of strings is the fact that you get a very good information base in order to try and make the right decision for you and your style of play. I will leave a link down below to the website where you can actually see the full range of Ashway strings. The best thing about it is that they also give ratings with regards to what they feel about playability of the string, the feel, the power that you get out, as well as the durability. It's actually done in such a comprehensive manner that I wish other manufacturers and string manufacturers would actually give this type of information out so they could help customers actually choose the right string for themselves. Here are the three Ashway strings that I tried out last year. So this is number five in total, but the first one from the Ashway range is the Ashway Supernix ZX, which comes at 1.25 millimeters. My overall rating for this is a seven and a half out of 10, and I actually stumbled upon this 
string when looking for an alternative to the Technic Fiber 305 1.2 millimeter string. So a couple of things that I like about the string is that although I have been playing with thinner strings for more than six months, I found that this is a great choice that provided a huge amount of durability. This is probably one of the strings that I experimented with the most and I found that it was actually really good at high tensions as well as low tensions, which I'm not saying is not common for strings themselves, but obviously some strings do it better than others. I found that you got a lot of feel and response out of the string, especially at a very high tension and obviously string a bit, little bit lower, you still got quite a good feel and response. This is probably one of my go-to strings in the thicker range of strings. I found that it was really great for control and going back and thinking back about some of the squash I was playing at the time, those were probably my most accurate lines of hitting and probably my most accurate drop shots when I was using the string and at, at obviously quite a high tension. And I think one of the things that is probably the most beneficial influencing factors that comes at a very good price point. If you are sort of deciding between maybe a Technifiber 305 1.2 millimeter as well as the Ashaway, I think the Ashaway at least at that time when I did try it came in a little bit cheaper and even though it was a bit cheaper performed either just as well and as I said it's a seven and a half and I do know that I did mention the Technifiber 305 1.2 is an eight out of ten but I knocked off one of the defining characteristics just due to the color of the string. So there, it's, it's quite up there. One of the things that I dislike about the string, I did mention the fact now, is that I'm not a big fan of the very bright orange. It can obviously change the look of your racket. And for me, not to say aesthetics are really important, but yes, I do enjoy looking at my racket in a, an aesthetic manner. And um, I found that the bright orange was obviously a little bit in your face compared to some of the other strings that you do have available. Another thing that I disliked about it is that I do not feel that it is as durable as the Technic Fiber 305 1.2 millimeter string. I did snap a lot of these strings. That can be, as I mentioned, attributed to multiple factors, but I don't think I have broken so many strings during this period of time, but it was a go-to favorite of mine. I did buy a whole reel of it, so I was experimenting. I won't say trying to break the strings themselves, but yes, obviously testing that string out over a couple of rackets and doing sort of experiments with tension, I did find that I snapped these strings quite easily. So tensions and rackets that I tried this out at was 28 pounds on the Carboflex Heritage 125, 27 pounds on the Technifiber Carboflex Airshaft 125, and 25 pounds on the Technifiber Supreme 125. Number six, and it's not a typo, it is the Ashaway Super Nick ZX Micro. So this is a 1.15 millimeter string. The micro will indicate the fact that it's obviously a little bit thinner compared to its counterpart, which we just spoke about. So my personal rating of the string is a seven out of 10. This was the string that got me experimenting with the thinner models of strings, meaning your 18 gauge strings. And it was actually quite a great entry point into playing with the thinner type of string, which give you sort of a different outcome compared to your thicker type of strings. So one of the things that I liked was the price point of the string. So as I mentioned, with respect to your thinner strings, they aren't as durable, but they do give you a little bit more performance, at least in my opinion, and in the opinion of many other squash players. With respect to experimenting and trying out thinner strings, this is a really good entry point due to the fact that it actually comes in at a quite a decent price point. Due to the nature of the thin strings and the fact that we are able to reduce our head weights, I felt that this thinner string at least and a lot of the other thinner strings that I have mentioned, I was able to obviously get a little bit more head speed, which meant that I was also able to play with a little bit more power even though I strung at a high tension. The other part, which I have just mentioned now, is the fact that a thinner string can reduce your head weight, which might provide you a little bit more head speed which can obviously get a little bit more power from on your shots. A couple of things I disliked about the string is that I felt that at higher tensions, you sort of get a bit too much feel. So this is one of the strings that they've obviously tried to give a little bit more feel to, even though it's quite thin. I found that you sort of got a little bit more feel, too much feel. I did feel that this was a racket where even though I strung it quite high, I felt a lot of vibration on it. Due to the nature of thin strings and the characteristic of the string itself, and this is something that I was able to and am able to circumvent by having rackets in rotation. This string will obviously snap depending how frequently you are playing, but I also found that I did snap the string a little bit quicker compared to the strings. Once again, this is obviously a few points docked off for the aesthetic component. I'm not exactly too much of a fan of the orange as well as black combination that they do have. Other than that, if you're not perturbed by that kind of colorway, then probably won't be an influencing factor for you. So tensions and rackets, which I tried this at, it's 27 pounds on the Techni Fiber Carboflex Airshaft 
125 and also I had it at 25 pounds on the Technifiber Supreme 125. It was actually quite a good combination on this. Last but not least, we here at number seven, the last ring that I tried obviously within this period of time, which is the Ashaway Powernick 18s which come in at 1.15 millimeters. My personal rating, nine out of 10. Personally, I feel that when I'm done with this reel of 1.1 millimeter Technifiber string, I'll probably move to the Ashaway Powernick 18. So some of the things that I liked about this, I think sometimes you do need a string that gives you the, the options of being able to play hard and fast or slow and controlled. And that means that you might not need too much feel and just need to be able to adapt your game without thinking too much getting too much feedback, which might obviously make you overthink. And I feel that this string does that really well. With the string, you're allowed to obviously apply the right amount of cut on the ball, as well as punch through a ball if needed in order to get a little bit more power from your shots. As I said, so it has the perfect combination, at least for me, with regards to power and control. I think it just does everything well. It's very hard to fault the string, except for obviously one of the things that I will mention, the dislikes, they are very durable. I do not think I have ever snapped strings on the Ashway Powernick 18s, but I am not a person that often breaks strings. And probably one of the most important factors is the fact that it maintains its tension really, really well. And I think for all of those factors, it's probably the reason why it's one of your most expensive strings. So with respect to dislikes, obviously it comes at quite a high price tag compared to your other Ashaway strings. This is your probably top of the range premium string. One of the things that some people might be a little bit put off by is the fact that they sort of like a breaking time. I feel that you need to play with the racket for about 30 minutes after it has been restrung with a fresh set of the Powernick 18s. And after that, you actually really get to play the squash and feel what it is that people like about the strings. I actually only tried this out on one racket and one tension that was perfect for me, which is 25 pounds on the Carboflex Airshaft 125. So to sum it all up, I feel that I have enjoyed the Technifiber strings when I need the two string at a higher tension and the Ashaway strings when I have obviously preferred combinations at a lower tension. Even though we have obviously spoken about the seven that I have tried out, there are some honorable mentions and with respect to honorable mentions, they do feature for specific reasons. So number one will be the suffix PU multi-fiber squash string, which comes in at 1.27 millimeters. Basically, this is a string that you will find at most clubs, it's your entry level string. It's a string that I have used just to sort of play around with different tensions on rackets before actually moving on to using a proper string that I would string on the racket. Some players actually swear by it because of the fact that it comes in at such a good price point. And I think if you are a person that frequently snaps strings or you're on court so often that you need to obviously restring almost every week or every two weeks, like my coach, the suffix PU multi-fiber strings could be for you, like they are for him. At least one thing I can say, I can't give you a like and dislike on the strings because I have tried them for longer than about three sessions, sort of experimenting with the tension, maybe sort of a string combination of your crosses and mains that I'll give to my stringer. I have tried out the suffix strings just to sort of gauge how it would feel before I obviously make the commitment to using, let's say, a whole set of Technifiber 305 1.1s or Powernick 18s. I have used the suffix strings as an experimental string. Then I also want to shout out to one of the subscribers called Level27XRock who mentioned the fact that there's a string called a Kirsch. And I'm going to really struggle to say this, but this is the best thing that I can try to say. Kirschbaum gut feeling string. He told me he's been trying this out. It's a string that Paul Cole uses. From what I understand, it's not available in South Africa, but if I do get a chance to get out of the country for a bit for work purposes, I'll definitely try to get that just in order to experiment with it. There is something nice about a neutral color string to call a gut feeling string. And obviously they're trying to mimic some of the materials that we use in your older models of squash rackets. From what I understand, they offer a range of strings from 17 gauge, which is 1.2 millimeters to 19 gauge. So they even have a 1.09 millimeter string. But obviously I'm aware that some people may fully disagree with some of my opinions. And there's some people which would agree with some of my opinions. So I think if you've got something to say, please obviously mention it in the comment section below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about the strings and some of the combinations that I have mentioned. And I'd like to know what your go-to string is. So what's your go-to string? What racket are you stringing on? At what tension? Why is that combination really good for you? It's obviously great to find that out, to see what other people are using, especially with regards to that curse bound gut feeling string. I never even knew it existed until I obviously interacted with someone else in the community. So it'll be really great to find out what you guys are using, what you guys have tested out there. As always, I'm still looking for my deal setup with regards to the right racket as well as the right string intention. So the search still continues. So it'll be great to hear what you guys have to say about some of either the newer rackets that are coming out there or some of the newer strings that I'm not aware of. But without further ado, that's all from me today. Until next time, take care. Cheers.